What is up guys, Lord Nick here bringing you another League of Legends related video and in, in this video guys we're going to be talking about coaching fundamentals. Uh, this is a series I'm going to be starting up, I haven't really come up with a name for the series yet, uh, but we're going to be going over different fundamentals of coaching as the series progresses um, and we're going to be establishing baseline fundamentals. I think that anybody who wants to get into coaching should kind of be able to understand and uh, apply to their scenarios. Um, so to start it all off with, we're going with one of the easier and simpler situations that I think is often overlooked by a lot of people, uh, which ends up being, um, the application of criticism and blame, uh, when are either and when are either of these things needed and when should they be applied individually? Um, and so we're going to kind of be discussing, uh, uh, that type of topic real quick. Um, so in my last video, we talked about personal responsibility and its relationship between it and criticism and blame and evaluating when is it you personally responsible? When should you be applying personal responsibility? This is kind of from a player outlook, not as much from a coaching outlook, um, though you can definitely apply certain things like that to coaching. Um, it, that was intended for players to start understanding personal responsibility better. Um, so in the scenario of understanding blame and critique as a coach, though, uh, we're still going to use the same definitions, right? Criticism is the application of a scrutinous eye to a situation or scenario, um, and it is a tool used to determine if something was good or bad based off of the uh, available analytics at the time, uh, or potentially lack thereof. And then on top of that, uh, you have blame, which is assigning personal personal accounting of criticism. You know, you are assigning critique to a specific person. Um, and the thing that can separate good critique from blame ends up being uh, your motive as the person giving said critique. Um, and the, uh, in the outside of your own motive, the intentions from the critique itself. What was your intended outcome from this critique? Does this critique gain anything for that person or does it just tear that person down? You know, is your intended result to tear that person down and still blame, but it might be blame with an actual intention that could be good. Um, so we're gonna kind of talk about those things and develop uh, a baseline for when either of these two uh, separate tools are used. To start with, we're gonna be talking about critiques. Um, so anybody who is a coach knows you're going to have to critique players at some point or another you have to criticize your players um, Because without criticism, there's no room for growth You know, you're relying hundred percent on the players ability to analyze why their scenario went badly or why their play was a bad choice um, And many times left to their own devices people like to look at results as the only reason and only thing that indicates if something was good or bad if you got a good outcome, it was a good play. If you got a bad outcome, it was a bad play. This is results-oriented thinking. A lot of coaches fall into the same pitfall. Um, and you shouldn't really necessarily be looking at the results. You should be looking at what was your established in, uh, intentions and goals. Were those goals met? You know, you might have won, but you may have won without meeting the intentions and goals that you had set previously. You might have completely botched the whole scenario. Um, for you know, no real gain in the end because, you know, your your team, while you may have won, what did your team actually learn from this? Well, we can mess up and win still. And that's not necessarily a good lesson to learn. Um, it's not necessarily a bad one, but your intended goals is for them to learn good fundamentals and good skills that can be applied to every situation. Um, and so if they're just actively doing the wrong things and getting the right result, getting the results that you're intending to get, um, this can backfire. So that's where criticism comes in is giving them criticism and explaining to them how it could have gone badly and why it was that bad situation. Not necessarily that they themselves are completely, you know, 100% to blame, right? You know, you, you have to you have to be able to give criticism without trying to play the blame game because if you're just 100% blaming your players, it's gonna start feeling like a personal attack. Even if they are at fault, even if they are to blame for a scenario going wrong, maybe they're they're making the wrong decision, they're playing really poorly, um, and they're not listening. You know, they might you know they might be at blame there, but you also have to take a look from their perspective. Has your team themselves been able to? 
uh, formulate a, an identity as a team? Have they come up with a concept that they generally want to play around or that you have established you want them to play around? Uh, do you change it game to game without having an established baseline? Stuff like this. Uh, so there's some critique within your own game, uh, within your own game plan that you have to sometimes look at as a coach. But when we're looking at critiques of players, you have to be able to differentiate the difference between blaming them and critiquing them. So for a hypothetical situation, we're going to talk about a jungler deciding to go into a 1v4 situation that was completely scoped out and known to try to steal a dragon away from the enemy team. So where is this 1v4 situation? Well, your mid lane is your jungler's mid lane is pushed in at the tower. Your mid laner can't help you. Your bot lane's in the same situation. You have full vision of the dragon, so you can see that there are four people gathered around it, and they're going for it. You have flash smite as the jungler. Should you go for this try to attempt to steal? Well, the first question you have to ask then, uh, which should be the question asked by the jungler, does this dragon really change the state of the game? Is this dragon one? Is this dragon three? Is this dragon four? What dragon are we on? That specific situation changes if this is a needed play or just a, you know, tactical int. On top of that, we've already established that this is a very unlikely scenario for you because of just sheer numbers and statistics. You know, while yes, a lot of people like to jokingly say, don't tell me the odds on things. In this scenario, you're looking to critique them so that they can gain actual knowledge about why this is bad. Well, they have to look at the fact that numbers wise, this is a very very bad play it is completely against you and it is completely in favor of the enemy team and the reason it's in favor is because you have to rely on them being able to be completely incompetent and letting you get in there you know yes the dragon smite steal might go your way you might be able to steal the dragon but let's say you had to use your flash and your smite to get the dragon they get a kill back on you they now know you're not on the map any jungle camps that they can track that are up for you um they can deep they have four people on the on the bot side they can invade your bot side jungle if they see nothing's up there that means that the jungler in the mid are have priority to gain priority mid again for him to then invade your top side jungle and punish you even more or they can roam as a four-man unit and punish one of your other lanes because they know you can't assist them so you're already putting your team at an known numbers disadvantage just for a dragon so if that dragon is dragon one this is obviously not a worthwhile play but the player might see it as well if they get to get a free dragon here you know they get to just get uh you know what what else you know are we just going to keep giving them dragons this feels like we're losing tempo so in the scenario of the who the player is you have to look at the at the position the player's in so you should be asking follow-up questions as to why did they think they needed to go for this dragon play and this isn't to assess blame or, and this isn't to apply you know you're not implying at this point that there is something innately wrong with their thinking but you need to know from your perspective why or from their perspective why they thought this was a play they had to go for this allows you to start understanding your player this allows you to give better and more informed criticism to that player if you cannot criticize them you cannot criticize a player without being informed on your criticism because if you're criticizing them because you think the play itself is bad that's one thing but if you don't understand the reasoning that the player's behind, you're not going to understand the reason why this bad play was made. You're not going to be able to stop this bad play from happening again. You have to be able to understand what their thought process is so that you can apply this to a more universal situation. Because if you just tell them, well, in these type of scenarios, this is a bad play because of numbers, the player themselves may not understand, you know, that there's other options that they can do so it's better to the instead of just saying hey this was a bad play because xyz this play is bad blah 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 blah. yeah you can break it down and be analytical about that but players aren't always analytical sometimes they're going to take that as a personal affront to their intelligence you know they thought it was a good play because of xyz but you never asked them why they thought it was a good play you're just telling them information just telling somebody information doesn't establish any type of credentials um, and so you actually have to think about the situation also from the viewpoint of a spectator. You know, if I myself have very little League of Legends knowledge and you're just telling me that contesting a dragon that has four people there is bad because I'm by myself, yeah, that should make sense. Doesn't always compute with people. Sometimes things just don't fire off correctly. So you have to break it down after 
you hear their side of things. Even if it's an obviously bad play, even if nobody in their right mind should go thinking about this play as a good play, you know, there's going to be, they obviously thought that this play was a playable play, you know, they thought that this was something that they could make for whatever reason, um, and, you know, you need to find out why that reason is. You have to figure out what it is that made them believe that they had some type of capability to take a play that is so obviously against them. Um, because if you don't establish that, like I just said, you know, they're going to repeat this even if you told, tell them it's bad. This is just human nature. Finding out something's bad doesn't always stop us from doing something, but you have to figure out why we're doing something. You know, addictive personalities is kind of a thing, right? That's why somebody smokes, you know, I started smoking because I had this reason for it. I continued smoking because I became addicted to nicotine. You know, somebody's going to keep making that mistake, even though you've told them not to make that mistake because they don't understand your thought process potentially. So you have to give them alternatives as well. That being said, blame this idea of assigning this critique specifically to one person losing a game can be something of a good thing because with it comes sometimes with blame comes shame and this is a powerful motivator to prevent somebody from messing up when somebody make and the time to use this type of criticism and this type of blame should be when somebody costs you a game there's a play like your team is in a very precarious situation they can win they could lose one person decides to make a hero play when nobody else is around and they get caught and they die and because of that your team is forced to do a 4 or v 5 to try to save the game because they don't have that extra player game's over yeah this is a scenario where you need to specifically assign blame to a person you know they should already know again this is another scenario where they should basically already know that they that they are wrong and in this case you're relying on them knowing that what they did was wrong and you're assigning this blame and this shame to it in hopes that they don't repeat the same type of mistake this is a completely different situation though because what they did specifically lost you the game what we were talking about earlier wasn't something that was a game losing situation so using that same type of thing in that situation is just going to make them afraid of making mistakes um you have to be able to allow them to understand that mistakes are something that you are going to make and you can make it's about being able to correct the mistakes now game losing mistakes is something that we should not tolerate in any situation shape or form so that's where you also have to kind of learn about what is tolerable and what is not um so these i think are the basics behind criticisms and blames for coaching and i think that the differentiation between the two really needs to be established more and they need to be used um bigger bigger part of you know criticism is great but you have to have feedback coming from your players because you have to hear why they did what they did you have to be willing to learn yourself to understand that maybe a scenario that the player did with the outcome is bad and that the play itself looked potentially bad, but maybe they had a different intended outcome. Maybe we go back to that 4v1 dragon play and they realize that, hey, there's only two plays left in mid, so I'm going to let my mid laner push this out and I'm going to try to stall these people here, you know, but they went in too early. You know then your critique is actually different right like you're not critiquing like oh this is necessarily a bad play yeah it's not necessarily a great play but if you're able to put a ton more pressure on the map because you're stalling them from being able to get back on the map you know this actually turns into a different situation you're looking at a different one but you're if you're focusing on what you think the outcome is but you're not getting the feedback from the player what the outcome was they're attempting to get was you're going to end up with a scenario where you're going to be looking at two different things. You're going to tell them it's wrong. They might actually believe you and they're never going to actually go for a scenario where they need to stall somebody again because they're afraid of making that mistake again. You see where this kind of inhibiting the idea, you know, your, your goal is not to make them fear mistakes. It's to make them learn from mistakes. So you have to use criticism as a tool to help them understand and get where they're coming from. Um, I falter at this myself, right? Like I falter at l being able to look at other people's perspectives all the time, but I actively try my best most of the time to do so. Um, when I'm in a coaching scenario, I generally try to hear out my players. I want to hear what their reason was, what their logic is, where, what was their end goal here? Um, and then explaining potentially a different situation that they weren't thinking about that could have been a better scenario for them. Um, 
And so when when you are looking at something like that, you kind of have to break it down and explain it to them in that way. Um, and you should look to do that as often as you can. I'm sorry, I moved away from the mic again. I'm really bad about that. <laughs> um, but you should do that as often as you can to reinforce the habit that it's okay to make mistakes. And as you start, you know, pinpointing how they are making these mistakes, you're, you're teaching them that ability to uh, actually, you know, learn that mistakes are okay to make. It's about learning from them. And then they're probably not going to keep making those same mistakes because they're actually okay with learning from them. And it reinforces the idea that they're human, they're fallible, and that they're going to be able to 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 move on from it it's not the end of the world and so treating it like it's the end of the world only makes them make more mistakes um hopefully you guys found this video a little bit insightful it was a little bit of a more rambly than i hoped it to be i thought it was gonna be quick and uh easy maybe less than 10 minutes that was wrong uh if you like this video leave a like leave a comment uh, i'm gonna be rediscussing this topic or not not this, specifically this topic but continuing the idea of coaching fundamentals things tips tricks tools um just things that you need to consider as a coach to become a better coach um and it, like i said like like comment subscribe all that fun stuff and hope you guys have yourselves a wonderful wonderful day bye guys